In this second part of our Max for Live and Push video, we're going to look at Follow XL, a Max for Live device that allows us to use dynamic scene follow actions on the Push 3 standalone, as well as having dynamic display parameters on the Push 3 screen. Let's start off with this first clip. Currently, follow actions aren't exposed to the Live API, so they aren't controllable via MIDI or any of the Push controllers. The Follow XL device replicates the calculations required for various follow actions and uses a guide clip to trigger them based on a set of chosen conditions. When using the push standalone, simply add the device to its own MIDI track, arm it, and then play through your set by triggering the scenes as you want them to play. This will record the required guide clips of the correct length into your Follow XL track so as to automate the scene follow actions the next time you play. Follow XL includes plenty of follow action options, including to play the scene again, the next scene down, the first or last scene in the current block of guide clips. The name option allows you to dial in a specific scene name. And when I select this within the mouse in live or the encoder on the push, you'll see that the blank encoder space next to the master follow action type gets populated with the names of the scenes that are available to be triggered, allowing you to choose the next scene on the fly directly from the push without having to dive through a number of different banks to find the parameter that you need at your fingertips. Change the follow action to relative, which will play a scene relative to the current one, and you'll see the display on the push changes again to allow you to dial in your choice. We've repeated this dynamic mapping of the push encoders with each of the follow actions that include further options, such as the randomized any scene option that can include or exclude the currently playing scene, and the cue next option, which will simply select and not trigger the scene below, and can let all the clips currently playing play till their end or stop immediately, as well as choosing between halting the transport or letting it run. Of course, if you set the transport to stop, you'll be ready queued up to press the global play button. Moving to the right of the device, we've given a number of trigger types to choose from. With the clip end option chosen and the guide clip nearing its end, the next scene is triggered, observing the global launch quantization. As the clip end trigger type needs the clip to actually end, you can let the scene continue playing for as long as you'd like by turning the loop on for the guide clip. This then also creates the need for a second trigger option, which allows you to bypass looping and dial in a number of loops that need to happen before the next scene is triggered. Select this option and you'll see your hands-on control from the push shows how many times the loop will play before the scene follow action will be triggered. The time option was created for unquantized tests clips for use within maybe an art installation. The clip stop option, on the other hand, is mainly for our Follow Clip XL device for use with dummy clips. I'll do a separate video covering that on the Push 3 at a later date. So let's dive into the device and see how we go about adding this dynamic mapping of the push encoders in Max for Live. We'll open the device to edit and let's use the trick from part one of control or command plus F to bring up our search field. We'll type in live.banks and set our view to be patcher rather than presentation view. Now, as I want to change the mappings on the fly, I've patched all the objects and encapsulated them within this live underscore banks patcher so as to keep everything tidy. It's got two inlets which are fed the number of the current follow action and the number of the trigger type. Let's look inside it. The follow action number, as each follow action is given an index from the live dot menu that it's listed in, will then trigger a set of objects based on the choice. You can see here on the left that the, when the device initializes, I want the first bank to include the trigger type, master follow action, and trigger time parameters. I send each of these parameter titles into a pack object which will store them and then output its stored values each time a bang is received in its first inlet. The message object below is used to format the list of parameter names from the pack object, including the dashes, which will remove a parameter from the screen, into the format that the live.banks object needs to be able to edit the display on the fly. I've added a prepend object below to add the bank name, and then this collated message is sent out the patch's only outlet directly to the live banks object, changing 
the displayed parameters on the fly. So with a little thought and preparation, you can program a Max for Live device that it's a breeze to use, bringing the parameters that the user needs to their fingertips when the context is right to do so, much like Ableton Live stock instruments and effects.